Hey, a pushers. This is Simon uh, out here, and um, so I gave you information last week about what the college said the Gators would look like, and then wouldn't you know, tonight with a big uh, Zoom meeting with the college board, and we find out that what they told us that they were thinking about is not really what they were going to do. So. Here's the new updated information that you need to know to take the A push test uh, this May. So, uh, once again, it will not be a face to face test, it will be done online at home. It will be a 45 minute DBQ, not an LEQ. Like they previously told us, they've changed their mind and instead they're going to do a DBQ instead. Uh, you won't have any choice answers. You will not have, uh, it says FRQ, it should be LEQ, long essay question. You won't have that. You will not have any short answer uh, responses. The time frame for the DBQ will be from 1754, so essentially the French Indian War, to 1945. That will be the time frame that the DBQ will cover. Um, my guess is they're probably going to do a DBQ that will, uh, will span a very large time frame so they can cover a lot of that time period uh, in one question. That would be my guess. Um, something around. Oh, or something, um, the uh, growth of American influence in world affairs from the uh, Revolutionary War to, say, Civil War, something like that. I, I think that the question will, will cover a number of uh, time periods. Uh, there will be two exam dates that you can choose from. Uh, the one that you will take, unless something crazy happens. You're unable to take it. it will be May 15th and it will be at noon uh, that you will have to get onto Google or excuse me uh, AP classroom and the test will be there ready for you to take so May 15th at noon and you will then have a 45 minute time period so if you get on for whatever reason at 1210 you no longer have 45 minutes you have 35 minutes to take that test. So be sure you are on, uh, ready to take that test at noon on May 15th. The other test date will be June 3rd, and that will be at 10 a.m. But in order to take that test, you must have a legitimate reason for not taking the test on May 15th. You have to demonstrate a reason why you were unable to take that test on May 15th. And sleeping in is not a legitimate reason. All right. So May 15th at noon, that's when uh, you will take the test. Again, there will be several digital monitoring tools uh, that are going to be used to prevent cheating and plagiarism and so on and so forth. However, they have acknowledged that this will be an open note test. So you will have access to all of your notes and, and all of your work and, and everything um, as you write this DBQ. They, I think they came to the realization it would be too hard. Not to prevent you from doing uh, notes on this test. So it will be an open note test. And as we get closer to it, um, Ms. Taylor and I will be working with you on how to effectively take an open note test. Um, again, colleges say that they will support this change and will recognize any passing scores on this test. If you need help uh, with connecting um, on this test or you need other, you have other technology issues, uh, call, contact the college board at that link there that I provided for you, uh, and they will make arrangements for you to uh, have the necessary technology that you need to take this test. Again, I would not take this test on your uh, cell phone. A smartphone is not the way to do this test. Also, I just thought of this. Do not write your essay using talk to text. I know many of you do that. Don't do it for this. Because when you do talk to text, very often um, what the computer hears and what you're saying are two very different things and you 
and for very weird words and very weird sentence structures and, and things like that. Do not use uh, talk text. Actually write the essay out. And if you decide that uh, you do not want to take the exam for whatever reason at this point, because it's not the multiple choice and the short answer and all the other things, if for whatever reason, at this point, you feel like you do not want to take the test, you can cancel uh, your test and get a uh, refund. There will be no charge for um, canceling the test because they're not printing any tests, so there's no restocking fees or, or uh, anything like that. So if you decide not to let, take the exam, let me or Ms. Taylor know, and then we can begin that process. Um, so we can cancel the test and, and everything. All right, so let's talk about what uh, this DBQ is going to look like. The DBQ is going to have five documents instead of the usual seven to eight documents. You will have five documents that you are going to deal with. Um, at least one of these documents is, is going to be some sort of visual document, a graph or a chart or a map or a political cartoon. My guess is it's probably going to be a political cartoon. They love political cartoons uh, for the DBQ. So you'll have five documents instead of seven and eight. At least one of them will not be a text document. It will be some sort of visual document. Uh, you will have 45 minutes to read and respond to the DBQ. You will then have uh, five minutes hours to upload your response to the College Board. Um, you must upload your response from the same device who originally accessed the DBQ. So if you access the DBQ on, uh, let's say, a laptop, and then you Upload, try to upload your essay from a desktop or some other laptop computer, it's not going to work. You have to, wh whatever device you use to open up the DBQ, that's the device that you need to use to submit your answer. Um, your response may be either typed on a computer, or if you feel more comfortable handwriting your response, you may certainly do that as well. You just write out your response on paper, take pictures of your response with your phone, and then upload it uh, with your phone or with your computer. I guess you can take a picture with your computer and then upload it onto that site. Again, make sure when you upload your response, you are uploading from the same device that you opened up the DBQ on. And the DBQ for this year and this year alone, I hope, will be worth 10 points. Hokey spooky. That's a lot of points. Usually your DBQs are seven points. Is that right? And now they're going to be worth 10 points. So it's a shorter DBQ, but it's going to be worth more points. Yikes. Let's look at what that looks like. So you'll get one point for a thesis, like you always do. One point for context, like you always do. You will get one point for using the content from two documents. So you use two of the five documents and you specifically mention and talk about stuff that's in that in those two documents. You'll get a point for that. You get a point for using the information from two documents to support your argument. So what they mean there is you're not um, directly quoting from that document. You're not um, telling what that document says. You're using inform information from this document to support your argument. You're explaining why this document is important, what the significance of this document is, um, so on and so forth, that, that you're analyzing the document rather than just using the information directly from the document. So one point for using information from at least two documents, one point for using uh, some, uh, applying some analysis to two documents. You get another point if you analyze two more documents. So if you analyze four documents to support your argument, you get two points. OK, one point for analyzing two documents, another point for analyzing two additional documents. You get one point for using at least one piece of outside info to support your document. So you're using, you're uh, bringing in information that's not included in any of the documents to uh, support your essay. 
you get one point for one piece of outside info. You get another point for using another piece of outside info. So if you bring in two completely uh, outside resources, two, two completely uh, pieces of outside information, you get two points. You get one point for applying CAP, context, intended audience, purpose, or point of view to at least one document you're explaining uh, either the context or the audience or the purpose or the point of view for that document. You do that for at least one document, you get a point. You'll get another point if you apply CAP, context, intended audience, purpose, or point of view, to at least one more document. So if you apply CAP to two documents, you get two, two points. And then, of course, the last, the 10th point, the unicorn point, which is, uh, again, extraordinarily difficult to get. The best way to get it um, that I've always uh, told you guys is to compare this event to an additional time, to a different time period in a different part of the world or so on and so forth. Um, the, the unicorn point is really hard to get. In all the years I've been grading AP tests, um, it's very rare that you award the, the uh, unicorn point. So um, again, I'm telling you, and I think Ms. Taylor would tell you the same thing, go for your easy points, okay? This is an easy point, thesis. This is an easy point, context. This is an easy point, uh, getting, just talking directly about uh, two two documents using information directly from two documents. These two are easy points. Uh, and analyzing two doc uh, four documents, analyzing four documents. What do they mean? Why are they important? Um, what's the significance of them? Um, this is really easy. Uh, bringing in two pieces of outside info. You should be able to do two pieces of outside info. Those are two easy points. These are two super easy points. So go after the easy points, right? If you get seven, eight, nine points on this, you're doing really well. These are pretty easy points. Again, um, think back to what I told you guys before when you're writing a DBQ. The documents should not be the focal point of the essay. Your argument, your opinion uh, should be the, the focal point of the essay, and the documents only help support your opinion. This is like writing an LEQ um, where you just get the prompt and you have to respond to it with evidence and support your, your argument. This is exactly like an LEQ. You just have documents that you're going to add in. Do not do a document dump where you just run through the documents, document says this, document says that, document says this, document says that. Um, Write a, a good essay as if you didn't have the documents, and then you just use the documents to support your your uh, argument. As we get closer, uh, Miss Taylor and I will work with you um, on how to do this test, how to use your notes effectively, um, how to write these uh, DBQs as we get closer to the test. So there's the real information, not the fake information that the College Board made us believe last week. This is the real information. If you have any questions, if you have any problems, if you have any concerns, uh, let Miss uh, Taylor and I know, and we will work with you as much as we can. Thanks. Bye.